Hey what's going on guys, my name is Gameslings and welcome back to Kerbal Space Program Beyond Home. It's been a bit of time, Beyond Home 1.3 is released, but today we are going to four different destinations. We have a lot of places to go to, so without further ado, let's go. Now this is going to be quite a complicated mission, mainly because there's quite a lot going on. I have a lander up here, but this lander is going to keep going down and back up, docking with this mothership, getting fuel from the mothership, and heading back down to the next planet. Now we might not be able to get through every destination, but we will still get a bit of money for each body we land on. So in theory, it's all right, but we now need to put that theory into practice and see how this rocket fares. Currently, I'm working on adding different trees, different varieties of trees to the home planet for those of you who do play Beyond Home. Uh, so hopefully you you'll be seeing some of them coming in the next update. Obviously, it's not going to be as long as a, of a wait as, <laughs> as the last one, seven months. Jeez, no, that's not happening. No, it will come as like a, a small patch. There'll be a couple more scatters, a couple more surface experiments that you can do, stuff like that, you know. Now you might be looking at the Delta V and going, hmm, 3,800, that is way not enough. Well, I have locked off the fuel in here. This ship is only for moving around, so I have 2,650 Delta V to play with for moving around. Now the question is, what order am I going to do things in? I'll save Armstrong until the way back, uh, because that's fairly easy to go to. Hopefully, we'll do alright. I mean, well, just, just as I say that, the fuel runs out. Now, I've got a fairly interesting encounter. You'll see this line is red, which means I've got an encounter with something inside the road sphere of influence, and that happens to be the lure. But the thing is, that little adjustment is going to cost us a little bit of a, a little bit of Delta V later on down the line. The long burn begins. That is a nice shot, though. Ah, oh, that's a good shot of road. I'm really happy with how it's turned out in, <laughs> in this update. I'll probably be saying that quite a lot, because it's been a very long time that I've been working on it for, and uh, I'm just finally happy it's out, you know? I'll be honest, I forgot that I put a second command seat on here. I was going to leave the scientist up here, but actually, you know what? Nah, we're going we're gonna to use this command seat. We're going to take Bob down with us. Is it Bob? It is Bob. Bob's coming with us. Now then, 3,697 meters per second is quite a bit, you know, that's quite hefty. This is a very efficient lander, which is why I have external storage here that I can just keep using and using up. So if in doubt, we can always send this lander back and it can dock with the station, just like most of my last missions. <laughs> I will be honest though, that is quite a hefty maneuver to slow us down, 975 just to be able to get an encounter with the surface. Luckily though, the majority of Scape is quite flat, I, I think, oh hello, <laughs> I think things will go alright with this landing, but I, I can't guarantee, but it's flat at least, alright, the surface is shooting up, this is a very heavy world, 400 meters per second left, 200 meters per second left, we can see the surface scatters, we're getting that close to the terrain. 50 meters per second and our Delta V is actually taking quite a hit. This is going to be a difficult one to come back from. I might need help from the mothership here. <laughs> we are using way too much Delta V for this. I'm going to have to do some magic. I'm going to have to do a very, very precise landing burn. Ugh. Oh, it's been done. <laughs> 1,333 meters per second left. Oof. Why is Delta V always a concern on these missions? But here we are, we're at Scathe, a fairly, fairly tame landing spot to be honest. Couple of bumps, lumps and bumps. Now let's do some science. 67.5 science from the surface sample, oh, perfect. You know what, we're even gonna plant a flag. Right, so we need a good site name. Now I have a history of coming up with good site names. So um, I think, I think this one will be quite a good one. There we go. Perfect. <laughs> he even kicked it. He doesn't approve. Let's go sample some rocks. Labour Kerman begins the long voyage across 200 meters of terrain. <laughs> Just to pause here really quickly. I really do like the what? The what on earth? Am I still in time warp? Yeah. <laughs> um. Yeah. I, I really do like how Scathe turned out. It might not be the most exciting planet, but it is one of the ones that I am the most happy with. It does look like something you might find. Perhaps not in our solar system, but in in real life, you know, it, it has that sort of eerie but quiet, like no one's touched it sort of vibe. Sample spire. Here we go. Since this is a more interesting rock, you'll get a more interesting explanation as to how it was formed. Nobody cares. Sample Pebble. We forgot to write a title for this one. The intern in charge of interpreting the data you sent back for this rock had a bad day, so all we can say is that it looks like a stone. Well, after a uh, complete failure in terms of getting science from a rock, we shall send this Kerbal back home to be promptly fired. And without further ado, I think it's time we set off. 
I'm going to get as low of an orbit as possible because this is difficult. This is going to be a hard one. Delta V, extremely limiting at the moment. So if I can get any orbit at all, that's all it'll need. That's all we need, just an orbit. Oh, we're going to be coming very close to the ground. Oh, I need to get over that mountain though. Oh, 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 taking some risks here. It is now day two of recording, and uh, yeah, I need to pick up where I left off, and that would be rendezvousing with the lander that's just been down to scathe. And yeah, I kind of had to use a lot of its RCS to get into orbit because it didn't have enough delta V to get into orbit on its own. So uh, it, it's it's no, it's gone a little bit south, I'll be honest. <laughs> There we go, I can just about see the lander down there, and I can use the rest of its RTS to uh, to dock wherever the hell it's gone. <laughs> and... Hey, we've made it back from the surface of Scathe. Now we just need to land on Skindo. Alright, it's time to begin the land on Skindo again. And uh, since we did this like two episodes ago, not too bad, you know, we know what to expect. We have so much Delta V, we have barely any speed remaining. This is going to be... A uh, doddle. Fucking doddle, who says that? <laughs> Just need to get rid of the rest of our speed. 20. 10. Not quite. And we're gonna, we're gonna have a nice, soft, soft touchdown. You know, not as stressful as the last one. Quite a simple, soft, very gentle encounter with the ground for a brief period of time. There we are. We have landed on Skindo again, and there's no pearls. Yes, there are. There they are. <laughs> there they are, just lighting up the surface a little bit too much there. He's also got to reset some of these experiments. Uh, I think I've got the mystery goos to reset as well. So I'll do those, and now I'm stuck. Bob, you idiot. You had one job, and you messed it up already. Now I can't move. <laughs> yes, we're out. Oh, and he's... He's messed it up again. <laughs> the gravity here is awful, look at this. <laughs> He's shimmying around. Now then, Bob, the daredevil that he is, is gonna go uh, take some science from places and things. He's really not that far away, is it? We'll have plenty to get back. Don't know about you, but it's a little bit bright, don't you think? Bob, though, nah, he's a, he's a black body. He is. He's he he's not t he's not reflecting any of that. <laughs> he's absorbing it all. He's taking it all in. These pearls formed in Skindo's volcano, which now lies dormant. They are still glowing and bored. There we go. We've done our stuff. We've landed on what they might call Skindo. And now all we have to do is go to Hydron, and then on the way back we'll go to Armstrong, and it'll all be good. So uh, to get an encounter, right? I need 1,023 meters per second of which I only have 1800 left with the mothership. Um, I think aerobraking is gonna be what we do here, boys. <laughs> oh, ho, ho, ho. that is bad. <laughs> We're only 44. Oh, the solar panels have gone. Oh, do I have, do I still have some? This is awful. Oh no. Oh no. What have I done? Why did I decide this was a good idea? Why did I even think this was going to be good? It was me being like, oh, Hydrus is all forgiving. No, no, it's not. <laughs> it's really not. Well, at least we're getting a capture. <laughs> I have a feeling it's going to be too much of a capture to the point that we will stop going up. I need to actually escape Hydrus's atmosphere. It's time to undock and say goodbye to the Kerbal in there. A sad day to be sure. But the glory of the mission must continue. <laughs> Suicide burn style. <laughs> I can be as inefficient as I want now. <laughs> hey, but we get to sample some stones. <laughs> ah, about to land. Soft touchdown on Hydron. There we are. With a fair amount of Delta V to play with to get back to road. However, and big however. Oh no, I do it with solar panels. Never mind. However is over. Surface sample. EVA report. Restore the experiments. Off to sample his last rock. Sample magnetic pebble. Stop looking at the stones. Admire the view of Hydrus. Well, Bob, if you're actually. Oh, no, never mind. Nah, we're good. Ah, oh, there it is. There's Hydrus. Now, Hydron's tightly locked, so I would have felt like a complete idiot if I landed on the wrong side where you couldn't actually see it. <laughs> <laughs> but no, oh, there we go. Bob's done his little report, and it's time to get back in. Ah, I get to be super inefficient with everything that I'm doing now. It is fantastic. Now I have a surplus of uh, fuel, which I wouldn't have had if I kept the mothership, so unfortunately we will have to rescue that Kerbal. I think I'll just do that in my spare time, though, because, it's, oh, man, this mission has taken three hours. Three hours to record. Oh, I'm going to have so much fun editing this. 
a like and subscribe, by the way, if you've watched this far, because these episodes take a really long time to make. Take a long time, a lot of effort to make, and I really appreciate it if you guys let me know by subscribing that you like it. So there's our landing spot. I mean, uh, more of an opportunity rather than actual planning. <laughs> when, I, when I get around to making bases and stuff like that, that is when I'm going to be planning proper landing sites, you know, full on. Where are the resources? Where are the scatters? Where's all that? You know, surface features? Yes. And uh, we get to sample some of the bones as well. There we go. Quite a rough landing for landings. Uh, unfortunately, Bob doesn't have much UVA propellant to spare, but he can probably just walk around and jump anyway, so who cares? Oh, 45 science from that surface sample. Don't mind if I do. We're going to have so much science by the end of this. Wow. And a powered landing on road is entirely possible with this ship, and I think I might do that. We're not sure what this is and we don't like it. Yeah, I would agree with that one. Now then, whilst Bob's doing his thing up there, uh, I need to catch him. So, uh, yeah, I'm doing it like this. <laughs> Whoa. Now I've just got to switch to Bob and make sure he doesn't fall off. Perfect. <laughs> right then, I think it's time to re-enter Rhodes' atmosphere. And this might be quite a challenge. Although there's the Kerbal Space Center. Let's see if we can do a powered landing from there then. Imagine seeing that coming in. <laughs> I'm just trying to save the Kerbals right now. <laughs> if a fuel tank explodes, fine. We can probably still balance out with the engine's gimbal. But if a Kerbal dies, that's an expense. <laughs> it's looking all right though. We're, we're crossing that threshold. We should be fine. Uh, the powered landing part though, that's that's the difficult bit now. Let's give it a go. Those poor Kerbals must be toasted. Now then, here we go. Let's give, let, let's try it. We're gonna land near one of the new trees. Very nice. Actually, there's one of the glowing trees. Now, there's more about that later. Uh, if you guys just sample the tree, you'll get a little bit of a, uh, an explanation. So, uh, you've got, you've got that to look forward to in the next update. Some fucking trees. <laughs> here we are, about to... The first ever powered landing on road, actually. I don't think I've done this one before. Oh, we're going back up again. Well, oh, we're going back to space. <laughs> there we go. Oh, that was kind of... Kind of a hard landing, but there we go. Look at the new trees. I'm really happy with how these have turned out. We've got four different types. We've got these ones here. Those ones there, we've got some over there that might be quite hard to differentiate between them. And then we've got the glowing trees as well. But anyway, 710 science. We completed the contract. We now have 1.3 million funds. Fantastic. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching this episode. Again, if you like that, please subscribe because these do take a lot of effort to make. And that's how I can tell uh, whether you guys are enjoying it or not. So anyway, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you all in the next episode.